Now, as much as I can appreciate the fact that AMD included the Wraith Stealth cooler with the Ryzen 5's 2400G, it would have been really nice if they had included the Wraith Spire because the 2400G, unlike the 2200G, does pack eight threads and it has Vega 11 and both of those combined at full speed are quite toasty. And this can handle it just fine at stock settings right out of the box. But what if you want that little bit more? Because both parts can be overclocked if they're on a B-class or higher motherboard. So what we did was we reached out to Arctic. So this is the Freezer 33 Esports Edition. Now originally we asked for the Freezer 33 One, which included a single fan. And an extra fan to see how things did if you wanted to upgrade it to push-pull. So they actually offered to send instead, just send the Freezer 33 that comes with a pair of fans and a couple of tubes of Arctic MX4, which I've never actually used. This does come with MX4, by the way. It's just a little pouch, which I'm not really a big fan of the pouch thing. The tube is so much nicer. So this isn't a full-blown review of the Freezer 33, but rather the Freezer 33 One and the Freezer 33, both the eSports editions in black and red, to see how well things go when used with the Raven Ridge APU. Now we did use this in our Apollo Ridge build, which this makes its first official upgrade. What we wanted to take a look at was, yeah, how was it packed? It was packed pretty nice. I mean, it was the cooler with the fans already attached via their clips and then a separate box with the hardware. Now inside this box wasn't any instructions. We had to look it up online, which really wasn't that hard to figure out, to be quite honest. Installation on the uh, rate for, the, for, for AMD is simply mounting the brackets and then using the stock back plate to secure the cooler to the CPU. Now this is the only part that I will kind of gripe. One, I like the fact that we reuse the existing back plate because that's a good structure. I mean there's no reason to replace what's there already. The only complaint that I have is that you set the cooler down on top of the CPU then you've got to get the screws down through it to the back plate and if the motherboard is already installed into the case then you gotta find some way to hold the back plate up while you're trying to attach it. I simply used a piece of cardboard that came in the box to push behind it, push up, but it's a little bit tricky, especially if you've never done this before. It's not exactly the most user-friendly mounting, but it is effective. And thankfully the screws have stops on them so that you don't over tighten it and either uh, bend the frame or the mount or pull up on the motherboard too hard. So pressure is easy to figure out. You know, tighten the screws down, screw stop, you're good. Uh, attaching the fans are super simple. They just use the little uh, metal clip. I actually like this more than most other ones because the clip goes on the cooler first and then you snap it to the fan, unlike a lot of them where it's either attached to the fan then you have to wrap it around the cooler. This makes it pretty easy to make sure that you get the fan at the right height. So the cooler itself is quite nice. It's a solid black powder coating. So I was actually a little bit concerned about how that would do with the thermals. But as we'll see when we get into the testing, it really wasn't that big of a deal. So speaking of testing and how well did the Arctic Freezer 33-1 and the Arctic Freezer full-blown eSports edition, how well did they do for the Raven Ridge APU? So we did two round or two different tests with three rounds of testing. We got stock performance on the stock cooler as on the Wraith Stealth cooler along with ga gaming performance using Sleeping Dogs. And if you've never used Sleeping Dogs for a video game test, go ahead, hook up your... Uh, kilowatt and watch your temperature soar because this game is going to depict a very worst case scenario because it's going to push the CPU and the GPU and it's going to pull a lot more power than most other games. So this is kind of a worst case scenario and where we'll see real gains rather than just looking for something like Dota 2 or Counter-Strike. So looking, the first test that we did was IDA64. We did the CPU, memory, FPU, and the GPU test all at once. So we wanted to load the whole SOC 100% at stock settings. Hold on guys, I'm gonna stop the video right here. I just wanna interject this. All of the tests at stock were running at the rated speeds of default CPU, default GPU, and memory running at 2933. The overclock speeds that we talk about later, the, GP, the CPU is left at stock, the CPU, CPU is left at stock, the GPU is running at 1600 megahertz at 1.25 volts on the SOC, and the memory is at DDR4-3200. Okay, let's jump back into the video. Now, interestingly enough, under the Wraith Stealth cooler, the CPU, and remind you, remind you stock settings, the Wraith Stealth saw a CPU temperature of 94.9 .9 degrees Celsius, and the GPU saw 93 degrees Celsius. That's hot. 
But adding the Freezer 33-1 in these graphs, you'll see Freezer 33-1 and then Freezer 33. 33-1 is indicating a single fan, Freezer 33, well, that's both fans and push-pull. So with the Freezer 33-1, we saw the CPU drop to 74.4, GPU drop to 71. That's a substantial drop. Mind you, I'm going to go ahead and insert a notation right quick to let you know that the ambient temperature in the room was 22 degrees Celsius at all times for all of these tests. It is a climate controlled room. I do live in the south of the U.S. and it is hot here. We have air conditioner. Believe me, we run it. Now, adding the second fan, I did not expect to see very much results. I was pleasantly surprised. The Freezer 33 dropped the CPU temperature even further to 71.5 and the GPU to 68. These were all with default fan curves on the Tomahawk V350 motherboard. So that was pretty impressive, but that was actually a absolutely worst case scenario. But what happens in a more traditional workload, such as sleeping dogs running 1080p medium settings on the built-in benchmark? We see the CPU peaking at 70 degrees Celsius and 66 on the GPU with the Wraith Stealth. So that is significantly cooler than the Ida64 run. But what happens when you add the Freezer 33-1 into the mix? Well, the CPU drops even further to 54.8 and the GPU to 51. Now, this is where I didn't expect to see that extra fan really make a difference and was pleasantly surprised once again, seeing it drop to 52.8 degrees Celsius and the GPU drop to 49. We're looking at sub 50 degrees for the GPU. That's actually quite impressive. Definitely not expected. So in one of our last tests that we did, th actually throwing, I'll put a link up in the screen, I think it's over here, for the Raven Ridge APU running Star, sorry, running Final Fantasy 15, the playable demo, mind you, but seeing what it would do. And in that, we had to run the GPU at 1500 megahertz because we found when we ran Tomb Raider at 1600 on the Wraith Stealth Cooler, it crashed. That was in a previous test where we tried to compare memory speeds versus core frequency. Okay, so overclock settings, like we mentioned before, running the CPU at stock and the GPU at 1600 megahertz at 1.25 volts and the memory running at DDR4 3200, we see a CPU peaking out at 84.3 degrees Celsius and the GPU at 73 degrees Celsius on the Wraith Stealth Cooler. Now I do have to mention here that on the Wraith Stealth Cooler at 1600 megahertz, it was not stable it would fluctuate all the way down to 400 megahertz at times. So it would fluctuate and it would peak out at 1600 and then fall back. So it was not a stable 1600 megahertz. So that 73 degrees Celsius, once it hit 70, it started doing the fluctuation. So we could see right away why we had to drop the core or GPU core clock back whenever we were doing some of our testing. Adding the Freezer 33-1, however, dropped the CPU to a drastic 60.5 degrees Celsius and the GPU down to 54. Now that is up over the stock, but it's only four degrees or three degrees Celsius difference once overclocked. So that's incredible to see that on the uh, GPU. The CPU got a little bit warmer, but adding that second fan drops the CPU down to 56.3 and the GPU down to 52. Again, a three degree delta over a single fan. So there is absolutely a benefit for the second fan on the Arctic Freezer 33, and it is so good to see this. Um, I am very pleased with the performance that we've seen, and this means that we can now continue all of the testing that we originally wanted to do with the Raven Ridge CPU, the Ryzen 5 2400G to be specific, at stock default clock rates, as well as full-blown overclock. And we could get DDR4-3400 running on this thing with no problem. I'd like to stick with 3200 because I feel like that's more reasonable, but if you guys would like to see our overclock results with the DDR4-3400, let me know down in the comment section below. That'd be really cool. But this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and this has been the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports Edition tested with one and two fans. And if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Either way, we'll catch you all in the next 